Bienvenue and welcome to my channel Baron Rees. Uh, this is my second build exploration video. And just so you know, I will make a little um, comeback on the Vowel Masochist at the very end of this uh, build exploration video. I do this because I decided to add my plan for item upgrades uh, since I did the tier list uh, that you can uh, find in the upper corner of this video. This makes sense because, you know, it will be valid for the whole playthrough. We're gonna look at the Shadow Striker. Quick reminder, this build can be seen in my playthroughs and the main concept of this is uh, bring the shadows. Uh, this is a second level crew or discipline. I really like the flavor that it has and uh, I will look at it uh, right away so that you have an idea what I like about this and understand the rest of uh, the build. So for 2SP, you make a move action. During this movement, you do not provoke break attacks, you move through opponents with no penalty, and uh, you cannot increase this movement with SP. So you will have to increase your movement with abilities or with other means that do not cost SP. Then you cast a spell 6 against each figure you move through, ignoring SY and line of sight because of course you could end up uh, behind a corner or something. And you roll your casting die and deal the result as magic damage. And you inflict darkness. The darkness is a very nice uh, negative effect to inflict. It imposes a minus one penalty to the attack rolls of the targets and also it prevents them from dodging. At the very beginning, there are not many monsters that will dodge, but eventually I think it will come in very handy. All right, so now that we know uh, of the crux of this build, I will make an overview of the disciplines and uh, all of the item upgrades that I will choose for uh, the rest of this uh, playthrough. The items, of course, will change the more I advance in the story. I do not include in this build any unique items that might exist or any relic. I do not know all of them and I don't want to spoil myself too much. So this is uh, what I choose for the beginning. You will see that I replaced the magic missile wand with a short sword and I replaced the first discipline with crumbling time instead of aspect uh, and I will explain why shortly. All right, so for the disciplines, uh, we're starting with Crumbling Time. This is for 1 SP, you exhaust uh, this discipline, you cast a spell, and you inflict uh, Wilt negative effect on your target. Wilt uh, increases the damage done to the target by 2 every time it receives damage. So this can really increase quickly uh, the damage output of all your allies. So this is the main way she's going to deal damage uh, at the beginning, with of course a few attacks uh, here and there. So the second discipline you will choose is Bring the Shadows, uh, I've already covered it. We move on to the third one, I decided to go with Aspect because this is a passive plus one to movement. It's kind of useless to have, well not useless, but it's not as important to have this movement boost before having Bring the Shadows. One important thing is that this movement isn't affected by terrain or allies, so this really will make the moving around to activate your Bring the Shadows very easy to achieve, and you will probably be able to hit a lot of enemies on the map or something like that. We then move on to Familiar. This is a level one assemblage. Basically, you choose a Familiar, and the Familiar that I chose is the Tadva. Uh, the Tadva gives me another plus one to movement uh, as a passive, and with a flip, I do not provoke break attacks until the end of turn. The flip isn't really useful, actually. I don't think I will need it uh, very much with this build. Another option that you could use is Euthanasia. Because you already have Crumbling Time, this could be very nice, because then you will already inflict Condemn. It's a little bit expensive, 2 SP. Yes, it deals for magic damage, but... I'm on the fence. Uh, I think it would be nice to have this just because it inflicts condemn, so that's one more uh, negative effect that you will inflict. We move on to the second level assemblage uh, that I chose, it's Ruination. Again, a little bit expensive, 2 SP cost, but it is reduced by 1 if all targets that I chose uh, have an effect. Uh, it can be a positive or a negative effect. Basically, you cast a spell against up to two different opponents with an SOI, and you roll your casting die, dealing magic damage equal to the result. It will be useful to be used after uh, bringing the shadows. I'm not sure that it's the best uh, level 2 discipline that I can take for this build, but it kind of made sense for me at the moment that I created it. 
Um, we move on to the third level assemblage. It's going to be the pessimist. It's a passive. When an opponent with an SOI fails a conviction check by three or more, inflict condemn. This is why I kind of put euthanasia as well on the back burner because I will be able to inflict condemn eventually when I will get the pessimist because uh, don't forget that uh, I will force a lot of conviction checks on my enemies with Break the Shadows. And finally, uh, at the very end, we're going to go with the tower reversed, an assemblage level 4 discipline. On exhaust for 1 SP, you cast a spell and you deal 3 magic damage for each effect the target has and then you inflict Darkness, Disease, and Paralyze. Darkness will probably already be on uh, your enemies, but Disease and Paralyze are gonna be two more effects, and that's super nice. If you have a Tome, maybe I will be able to cast the Tower Reversed again, and then uh, profit from the Disease and Paralyze that just have been inflicted with the same spell. So honestly, this is something that I will probably look for in the end, having a Tome instead of a Buckler, because I will have a lot of movement uh, bonuses in. I will see. Then let's move to the item upgrades. Of course, I will choose Otherworldly first and foremost. It will give me a plus one to my force values. Half of the time that I roll the casting die, because it's on the three higher values of every die, no matter what color it is. I will then take Imbued, Unexhaust when determining the force of a spell, add plus one to the roll. So that can be uh, very nice, especially uh, when using Bring the Shadows. It will increase the force uh, of the spell for every conviction check that the enemies uh, will have to make, so that's very nice. And then we move on the core upgrade. This is Dark as a passive during my turn. Opponents within your SOI that are inflicted with an effect have minus one to their conviction checks. So that will even increase the chances for me to land Bring the Shadows. And also this is going to be an increase on the chance of triggering the Pessimist. We finally move on the last uh, item upgrade. It's Ethereum, basically another plus one to movement. It's the last one that I will take. Maybe I could take Elegant. Maybe I could take a more defensive option, thinking about Enchanted, for example, so that I can resist a little bit more to spells. For now, that plus one makes sense because it adds to the synergy with Bring the Shadows. Maybe it's overkill. When you calculate all the movement bonus that I have with this build, we start with six, seven, eight, 9, 10 if I continue having a uh, cloth armor uh, in the future. Uh, that's a lot of movement. The point is that you maybe would like to be able to place yourself after you've run through all these enemies back in a place where they all are in your SOI, right? This might also affect the item choices that I take in the future. Increasing my SOI seems to be a good thing. I would not take the glowing core upgrade. I'd rather have dark. It's really strong with a debuff build like the Shadow Striker. All right, so here is the little add-on uh, for the Vowed Masochist. Let's see which item of grace I decided to give her. I have this in mind that she's kind of a a Gishi spell sword character. So I decided to use Otherworldly. This will help with lending spells, but also if she decides to make attacks, which can be a very good decision for her, she will be able to use the books to increase her damage. So that's super strong. Um, already uh, the fact that uh, the long sword increases to an orange die, this color is more book oriented and the magic talisman forces an empower for spells and attacks. So the empower die with otherworldly is very good because uh, every result except the skull will at least give you a plus two in magic damage up to a plus four. Then we move on to imbued. I decided to take imbued instead of masterwork uh, simply because uh, I think it's a little bit harder to land spells. Then we go to dark. Uh, since at that team I will have the shadow striker, this is gonna be easy to use. Uh, eventually all of my enemies will probably have an effect, either a positive one or a negative one, so she's really gonna be able to use this to her advantage and uh, make her landing spells uh, more easy. And finally, I decided to go with Elegant for the armor upgrade. I do this because having a free counter and because she's kind of a spell sword and because she empowers every attack, uh, I think uh, this really makes a free counter a good option to have this unexpected damage uh, added on to the current round. 
So this wraps up this build exploration. I hope this build interests you. Uh, please leave in a comment uh, if you used a similar build. Uh, also, leave me suggestions on what you would change in this build. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, see you next time.